Hello, I am Professor John Lavoratory, and I see you have caught me going to the bogs, the loo, the crapper, the john, uh, let's just face it, the toilet. Toilets. Nobody wants to talk about them, but let's face it, people use them every day. I know that it is awkward to talk about the toilet, but the toilet is actually pretty cool. And without them, where would we go to the bathroom? So if you want to learn about history and inner workings of the toilet, then you're in the right place. Before toilets were invented, people would relieve themselves any way they could, even if it meant using coconut shells as toilet paper. Ouch! In medieval times, people just dug a hole and took care of their business wherever they wanted and whenever they wanted. In the 1300s, people got a little more sophisticated and would collect waste in a bucket, then dump it on the street. That caused waste, your waste, your neighbor's waste, to collect at the bottom of the street. You would not want to live at the bottom of a hill. With all this waste being dumped everywhere, germs started to spread. Diseases like black death and smallpox caused many people to die because of poor sanitation that led to the spread of these deadly diseases. As you can see, it got pretty messy without the toilet. That is why Sir John Harrington, godson of Queen Elizabeth, invented the toilet in 1596. Harrington invented the toilet to save space of all that waste and make the world more sanitary. His first toilet was called Jake's, which was an old slang word for toilet. It was a flush valve toilet that had a wash down design to help empty the bowl. His toilet worked so well that he even installed one for the queen. This new toilet design became very popular and with the Industrial Revolution, several people started to manufacture toilets. Inventors continued to improve the design of the toilet. A man named Alexander Cummings invented the S-Trap in 1775. This device allowed the standing water to seal the trap and prevent foul air from escaping from the sewer. This design is still used today. With more improvements on the design of the toilet and improved sewer systems, water closets became a popular addition to many homes. Thomas Crapper is often credited with inventing the toilet. However, he made some improvements to the design of the toilet like creating a siphon system for emptying the tank. The toilet works has changed over time, but some parts are still very similar to the original Harrington design. Basically, a tank for clean water over a bowl for, shall we say, less clean water. Let's take a closer look at how this contraption works. The tank is always full of clean water. When there is a <coughs> need to flush, a handle is pushed. Attached to the handle is a chain that lifts a flap in the bottom of the tank, releasing clean water into the bowl. The waste then goes through a pipe, taking it out of the house. The bowl is left with clean water and the tank refills. A float in the tank triggers the water flow to shut off when the tank is full. You may think that toilets have more bacteria than anything, but they don't. 
According to Reader's Digest, keyboards have 200 times more bacteria than toilets. But that doesn't mean that toilets don't have lots of bacteria. Whenever you flush an open toilet, everything within six feet of the toilet will get covered in bacteria. Even your toothbrush! How gross is that? So that's all about the toilet. Hope you learned a lot. Well, there you have it. The toilet. Where would we go without it? Speaking of, please excuse me.